This is Ursula Skye, commander of Colonial Star One. We are under attack. Repeat, under attack. My ship has been overrun by the Black Brigade. Captain Talon is in control of the Star Splitter Cannon. They're beaming colonists aboard the Black Dragon as hostages until the cannon crystals are found. Situation bleak. Deflector shield destroyed. Can't hold out much longer. Please respond. American Laser Games presents Space Pirates. <laughs> Space. The Wild West. The criminal underworld. The Wild West again. And again. And again. At the start of the 90s, you couldn't go into an arcade without seeing an American Laser Games machine somewhere in it. Unless it was a crap arcade, obviously. ALG picked up where games like Dragon's Lair left off. Big, shiny Hollywood experiences offering high prices and very low interactivity. Instead of simply pressing directions though, now you had a plastic gun to play with. And instead of animation by the legendary Don Bluth, you had the kind of acting that Hollywood could only dream of. Probably after eating too much cheese. There ended up being ten of these games in total, with most ported to the home. By far the most famous, in the UK at least, was the first, Mad Dog McCree, followed by Space Pirates. Others included Who Shot Johnny Rock, Crime Patrol, and The Last Bounty Hunter, continuing a Wild West theme that would serve ALG well. The basics of these games are easily enough understood. Enemies pop up, you shoot them. If you don't shoot them fast enough, or you hit a civilian who's probably waving around going, don't shoot me, you lose a life. Looks like this good old boy has seen his last gunfight. Later releases started piling on the gimmicks, but all had this as a core mechanic. Unlike later games, Time Crisis for instance, all the action is pre-recorded. With production values this good though, it's hard to notice. Oh, this thing will fry you! Looking back some 20 years later, or if you're too young to remember these games, in which case I hate you, it can be hard to remember why these games were so popular. They certainly haven't aged well at all. Not me. Unfortunately, I don't have any handy footage from the 90s, but I'll try to explain with a couple of, you know, illustrative diagrams. This sheet of paper represents a 1990s arcade in the UK, probably a bowling alley or something. You can see the arcade machines. They came in all different shapes and sizes, but most would be fairly standard cabinets. An ALG game, though, would be big and loud and give players a gun. They stood out, and usually had a big crowd watching other people put in their money. These crowds weren't there for competitive reasons, you know, like you would on a Street Fighter machine, they were there to help kill that most precious of gifts that is time, and to see how far the latest sucker would get on his pocket full of pound coins. It wouldn't necessarily be a he, of course, it was just 90% likely. For the sake of balance, this may also be a he wearing a skirt. Or a kilt. Every game started the same way, an easy bit at the beginning that everyone knew, ramping up to the excitement of seeing whether an individual player would be able to get past what we'll later see as the bullshit gate, and show off something new. And then one of the other machines would turn out to be a reincarnated Hitler. And then the zombie Third Reich would rise, coincidentally as aliens invade. And then there is war, and fire, and somehow Hitler wins! And due to poor health and safety... <coughs> they looked quite cool. That was enough for 1991. Home versions were guaranteed, as was the disappointment of realising that these games were far less impressive out of their natural habitat. The most common copies are on DVD, designed to be played on absolutely everything and therefore playing well on absolutely nothing. Every time you have to shoot, the whole game has to stop to trigger a menu and split the screen up into potential target areas. The result is jerky, annoying and fails all the time. Second, there are the DOS versions. These play much better than the DVDs, but well, you have eyes. Most of the time you're lucky to even see what's going on, never mind shooters. Space Parks is especially bad for this, with all of its smoke effects and very busy backgrounds. Finally, unless you're willing to spend more money than I am, there are the Windows versions. At first glance, these look like the best of both worlds. In fact, the scripting breaks down quite often, especially when you get to each game's gimmicks. 
Still, they're the versions most of this footage comes from because picking apart the DVDs would be an exercise in torture and frustration and people would die. Some of them probably nuns. <laughs> Mad Dog McCree is, unsurprisingly, the simplest of the set. You are the stranger, which translates to guy everyone just expects to sort stuff out for them, with the stuff in question being the outlaw Mad Dog. Mad Dog McCree, to be exact. That leads to a lot of shooting, but not much in the way of actual plot. The funniest part comes when you have to go to rescue the sheriff from jail. I think this might explain why everyone's been hoping for a saviour from outside. Ideally one who hasn't been drinking the water. Mad Dog! You don't stand a chance. Let's go get him, stranger. I got him! Hey! This being an arcade game, you can spot the exact moment it gives up any pretense of actually wanting you to succeed. Most of the shooting is just memorising patterns with the occasional bit of randomness thrown in for good measure. Obviously on PC it's mostly effortless. In the arcade you were a good distance from the screen and using a light gun, so, well, good luck. Even so, most players could get a good chunk through the first area, at least after watching a couple of other people play. Then you get to the Valley of Insert Credits, which, like the designers, it goes straight to hell. Here you have to find your way to Mad Dog's Lair, and you only get one glimpse at the map. Instead of just walking there, you now have to shoot the world's most unhelpful signs. Pick the right one, and some people shoot at you. Pick the wrong one, and everyone shoots at you for an instant game over. Luckily they don't follow this tactic in the final showdown. It's all right, honey. We're saved. We're all saved. It's great. I saved us. We're not even holding to you, stranger. I get a bad feeling. We're going to need you again, stranger. <laughs> a year later, the same idea came back in Who Shot Johnny Rock? Uh, which moved the action to the world's cheapest film noir setting by way of Dick Tracy. Apart from an appearance on Games Master, I don't think I ever actually saw this one in the wild, most UK arcades apparently skipping to the next game, Space Pirates. But wow is it a mess. You're a detective in this one, hired by a client so generic her name may as well just be Red. You can call me Red. <sighs> Red here is Johnny Rock's fiancée, and in blatant violation of film noir rules, not actually up to anything. She is, however, played by an actress whose contract apparently stipulated exactly four minutes of acting and four minutes alone. I mean, look at this. Even the most blasé femme fatale shouldn't be getting out-acted by her own chair. Nail the rat that did this. Put him away until he's as old and grey as the cement in his cell. Then I made my second mistake. I said I'd try. Who Shot Johnny Rock has to be the most overcomplicated shooter ever to hit the arcade. Now sure, most of the time you're just doing standard ALG stuff. Singer Johnny Rock has been shot, you probably guessed that bit, and there are four suspects, measles, mumps, smallpox, and lockjaw lil. If crime's the disease, you're the cure, and stuff. Picking only one to shoot though seems a little bit pointless, since all of them are murderous psychopaths who want to gun you down simply for saying hello. Still, I guess that's what you get for being the star of a light gun shooter not called Duck Hunt. What's not so obvious is how much else you have to deal with here. Buying ammo for starters, though the Windows version doesn't bother with that, or for that matter switching the usual ALG pistol for the arcade machine's Tommy gun. The investigation element though is just insane. It's randomly generated every time, now keep count and remember this is an arcade light gun shooter. At the start of the game you can see Johnny Rock's corpse, and he's holding a number that you can use later on in the game, okay? Not too bad. You then have to go to all four suspects, each of whom will give you their clue. An item, like a painting or a decorative plate. Don't look too hard if Lockjaw Lil shows you her bust. With all four of these, you then have to fight your way through Johnny Rock's mansion into his private study. There, you have to shoot the four items you've been told about to get the combination for his safe. 
and after a quick round of what the hell do you want me to shoot at, you're then given the reference to an item that one of the other characters showed off earlier so you can go back and shoot them, solving the case. Johnny Rock, wreck my life like you wrecked my bar. You're never going to get away with this. You can't do this to me. You can't do this to me. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I always liked film noir style, so I really wanted to like this game. Its story is dreadful, though. Its gimmicks just get in the way, and the ending is just... Wait, wait a minute. Oh, well. Tomorrow's another day. And I know something about survival. And now, I did too. But I had this strange feeling that we'd all meet again. Another day. I know that music. Small genre, ain't it? Presumably this is just a bit of, you know, stock music that both companies used. I mean, after all, no one would ever accuse Axis of playing fast and loose with other people's stuff. Alright, let's just do one more, since it's the only one that's really funny enough to bother with. This is Space Pirates, easily ALG's dumbest game, and I do not say that lightly. The story of this one kind of speaks for itself. The Black Brigade, or as I think of them, the Codpiece Corsairs, have kidnapped a group of colonists, and only you and the old guy from Mad Dog McCree can save them. Your history, Ranger. Too bad. I thought you could do it. But why not try again? How well did this work out given ALG's usual budgets? Oh dear. But then I suppose it's hard to keep good scenery when your cast keeps chewing on it this much. to this lovely but pitiful creature. Any attempt to come to her aid will be met with certain extermination. You see this black hole? It was Parallax to this me. Now I will answer him with his own star splitter. This galaxy is mine! Who can stop this mad pirate? Most ALG games are fairly campy. Space Pirates is the one that just gets funnier and funnier the more you play. So this red shirt, for instance, with his uniform that zips up at the back, exactly like sensible uniforms don't. The Space Pirates having to put skull and crossbones stickers on stuff because presumably the shooting locations wouldn't allow them to break out the spray paint. And, or, or how about this guy? What are you doing? Commander Sky, though, you know, from the intro, is the undisputed queen of things you only notice if you actually play the game a few times. For instance, is this really her uniform? Do all space captains wear a ceremonial skirt of flashing so the crew can witness their underpants of command? My favourite bit, though, is the scene where you have to rescue her from the bridge. Now, this must have been incredibly boring to film, just being tied to a wheel while all the stuntmen jump around. The actress doesn't even try to hide the fact she's just a prop, though, and only just reacts to what's going on more than red back in Johnny Rock. I think this is my favourite bit. Save Ursula! <laughs> this is about the point that most people seem to get to in the arcade, not because the shooting is particularly difficult, but because this is where ALG really devotes itself to the god of bullshit. Here, for example, Ursula is trapped in a beam and you need to shoot it when it's the right colour, as told to you earlier. If it's red, though, look how fast you have to react, courtesy of the worst actor in the entire game. Save the commander! Save the commander! Oh, but that's just the start. By this point, ALG had no shame about this kind of thing, and to celebrate this credit sucking from all three games, I've created this special bullshitometer where zero is, you know, mild bullshit, five is actual bovine excrement, and ten is Gearbox's Randy Pitchford promoting aliens colonial marines. Let's watch. <laughs> 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 
kind of bullshit. 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 You looking for trouble, stranger? Oh, bullshit. <laughs> the biggest advantage this game gets because it's Gearbox software building it is we're not settling, you know. As with the other games, the initially linear shootout through the ship soon opens up into a choice of worlds to explore, all of them full of the kind of people you'll want to shoot far more than the pirates, but usually aren't allowed to, along with scenes built with whatever the hell kind of props could be scrounged up before the shoot. I mean, come on, a cannon? None of the worlds, which somehow all manage to be worse than the others, are more than a couple of screens long, and are made challenging mostly by the addition of stupid or poorly explained gimmicks. Beware the Grim Reaper's staff. Shoot him eight times before he laughs. Come on, seriously? Don't shoot what the medicine man brings from the fire. But shoot before lightning strikes. Wait, 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 what? I, I need a pencil, hold on. Sit by the fire. Perhaps the location of the crystal can be seen within. You are not easily fooled, my friend. The crystal is there. <laughs> These worlds also somehow manage to be even cheaper than the section set on the ship. I mean, this is just sad. And how about this? Or, or this? I mean, the only thing you can say about this is that at least it's better than this, I guess. Overall, though, I don't think it gets any worse than using lava lamps as futuristic targets. Those weren't cool even in the 90s. Now, plasma orbs, those are still awesome. I see you, Star Ranger. Not too surprisingly, all of this ends up with another straight-up showdown with Captain Talon, scenery chewer in chief. He's not actually that tough, though getting up to this point would take a lot of practice, memorization, and cash. And your reward for this investment? Wow, incredible, totally worth the million pounds that would have taken. There's no real point looking at the other games, because aside from Crime Patrol's modern setting, they were all basically the same anyway. If you want to track them down, eBay is your best bet on PC, but don't expect the DVD version to find too much cop, even Crime Patrol. Besides, if you don't have that nostalgic streak for them already, you're probably not going to see what the big deal was now. Games like this may have been bigger in the 90s, but in the 90s, they should probably stay. Later, dude! <laughs>